Top Gun came out in 1986, and since that time, it's been one of the most popular military aviation movies of all time. Also very influential if you talk to anybody who joined to fly in the last, say, 35 years. I guarantee you they probably would say that they did so because they saw the movie Top Gun when they were young. But that doesn't mean the movie doesn't have some technical errors. Now, before you jump into the comments and mansplain me about how Top Gun is just a Hollywood movie, let me say I know. But here at this channel, we take our tech detail very seriously. Further, this episode is presenting, presented very lovingly with great reverence for those who've ever strapped into a jet or will do so in the future. All right, so let's go through the most egregious among the technical errors. And I tell you that if you watch this episode, you may never watch the movie Top Gun the same again. So that's a, that's a warning. So the first one, at time five minutes, Goose's radar presentation shows the sweep going 360 degree, which is what we call a PPI sweep, like on a, a ship's radar. Now, in real life, the F-14's radar only went 65 degrees either side of the nose. And you wouldn't want the radar sweeping 360 degrees because that means it was radiating back towards the crew in a high-powered radar like the AUG-9 that can pick up targets at over 100 miles would definitely present a serious health hazard to the crew it was radiating at close range like that. So that's a big error. Number two, at time eight minutes, Cougar transmits, this bogey's all over me. He's got missile lock. Do I have permission to fire? Well, whatever the rules of engagement, Cougar's questions mood until he does some pilot shit and actually maneuvers his jet into an offensive position. So do that and then maybe ask that question about the ROE. Number three, at time 9.01, as far as Maverick's 4G inverted dive goes, as Charlie later labels it, if the two airplanes were that close, the Tomcat's vertical stabilizers would be jammed into the top of the MiG-28. Number four, at time 9.59, Merlin taps on a fuel gauge that doesn't even exist in the rear cockpit of the F-14, only in the front cockpit. The Rio only has a fuel totalizer. Number five, at time 10.06, Cougar rips his oxygen mask off to breathe more oxygen, which would be in short supply at high altitude, so he really should have just left it on. Number six, at 10.12, Cougar has a photo of his wife and baby, for some mysterious reason, taped over the airspeed gauge. Number seven, time 12.27, there is no way Cougar wouldn't have been waved off by the landing signal officer based on that wild approach that he does. He gets at least five power calls during the pass. The Airbus would have been very unhappy with the LSO after that, had the LSO not gotten him out of there way before he tried to cross the ramp. Number eight, time 1251, Cougar traps and immediately shuts the jet down instead of taxiing out of the landing area. Meanwhile, Maverick is still airborne, low on gas, and still needs to land, but now he can't because Cougar has fouled the landing area and has to be towed out of the wires. Number nine at time 13. Now, we're, we don't know exactly what the billet is of this bald-headed guy. He's, he's a, a commander. He's an 05, and he's got a really nice stateroom for an 05. Um, later in the sequence, he says, you can tell me about the MiG some other time, and dismisses the crew to head for Top Gun, and that would be an act of professional suicide because he didn't get the only information that anyone above him in the chain of command would have cared about that particular day, which is the stuff about the MiG. Number 10, um, Tower, there's some dork riding a motorcycle down one of the taxiways, shaking his fist at us. Number 11, at time 12.52. A hangar is not the most conducive place for detailed flight briefs because there's a lot of noise with jets turning on the flight line, and it's definitely not uh, a space where you could have classified briefs. Number 12, at time 29.53. The smoke effect is actually the Tomcat dumping fuel 
stupid idea when you're about to enter a dogfight, when you need all the gas you can muster because you're going to be using a lot of afterburner, which definitely goes through gas. Number 13 at time 31-31, Maverick hits the brakes, quote-unquote, by pushing the throttles forward, which actually increases power, doesn't decrease it. Now, if you look at the trailer for Top Gun Maverick, it looks like they fixed that. The, the directors got their act together, probably because they heard about it for all these years. And in Top Gun Maverick trailer, they pull the throttles back as he does that, that same move. So uh, we have progress here. Number 14, at time 35.52, Maverick explains while he's getting shit on about what he did out there during that first Top Gun mission. He says, we weren't below the hard deck for more than a few seconds. I had the shot. There was no danger. So I took it. So the hard deck actually simulates the ground. So what Maverick is basically saying is, we didn't hit the ground for more than a few seconds. Number 14 at time, I'm sorry, number 15 at time 5531. Why is Hollywood eating an orange on the flight line? This, this always bugs me. That bugs me. That visual. I don't know why the directors or the screenwriters like, have the guy be eating an orange as he's about to go flying. Um, it's bad practice. Seeds can actually, you know, get sucked into an engine or whatever. Number 16 at time 5726. So the logic of this entire engagement is just ridiculous. First, Maverick lets Jester go, and then he flies in parade formation behind Hollywood, who's saddled in super close behind the other bandit. Hollywood whines at Maverick not to leave him when he should just shoot the bandit right in front of him. Then Maverick leaves to go after Viper and ultimately winds up getting shot because Goose does a shitty job of looking behind them for the bad guys. Number 17 at time, 1.06.56. And this is the flat spin compressor stall sequence. Goose says, shit, we got a flame out. Engine one is out. However, the Rio doesn't have any engine instruments in the rear cockpit of the F-14 that would indicate to him that that engine actually did flame out. There's no way he would know from the back seat. That's a pilot call. Number 17 at time, I'm sorry, number 18 at time 107.13. Iceman transmits, again, the flat spin sequence. Mav's in trouble. He's in a flat spin and headed out to sea. As I described in the Why Goose Died episode, when an airplane's in a flat spin, it's not heading anywhere except straight down. Number 19, time 126.50. Aviators would not get orders at the Top Gun graduation. They'd actually get them through a frustrating process of arguing with their detailers, the guys who give them orders, through email and occasional phone call over the period of a few months. Number 20, at time 139.47, Maverick leads a two-plane flyby next to the carrier with a wingman that's been riddled with bullets and most likely has sustained major damage to the hydraulic system that powers the flight controls. You're not putting the wings aft and doing a nice parade formation pass at low altitude if you have a wingman who's been shot with a lot of bullets. And finally, number 21, at time 141.14, Iceman says that famous line, you can be my wingman anytime, which ignores the fact that unless he's the OPSO or the scheduling officer or the squadron CO who signs the flight schedule, he just needs to suck it up and fly with whoever he's assigned to fly with on the flight schedule. Okay, now, we there is some connective tissue between Top Gun and Top Gun Maverick, based on the teaser, the trailer that we've seen, which is, at the very beginning, a Tomcat flies into the, the frame. So maybe the F-14 is still part of the fighter inventory. We'll just have to see. All right. Thanks to all the new subscribers. If this is the first episode you've seen, please ring the bell, subscribe, share, like. Likes are very important. So I appreciate the likes. I love the comments. And I look forward to talking to you again soon.